Ron, can you take us through, uh, as you, after you watched the tape, the assessment of, of Kyle Allen's day yesterday? Well, I, I think the, the biggest thing is, you know, he had his moments. I mean, he moved us down into the red zone three times. Unfortunately, uh, he, he, he made mistakes trying to make more things happen. Um, we could have helped him. You know, we could have protected him a little bit better. You know, and, and again, it comes down to, 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 to doing our jobs. What was the specific problem with the offensive line yesterday in protection? Well, there are some things that, that, that happened because of uh, the opponent you're playing. You know, sometimes some things happen because of, uh, you know, getting beat individually, not using technique, not falling back on the things that you've been taught. That's part of it. Ron Jerry McCoy said when he came here that one of the reasons he came here was his team has shown resiliency under you. Is there anything from your past or what from your past that has enabled you to push that on the team and, and have that happen? Well, we'll see um, if we can do it again because probably the biggest thing more so than anything else is we control it. It's one game at a time. It's one focus at a time. And that's probably the biggest thing we have to do is focus in on the next opponent. And, and that's just getting ready for, uh, for New Orleans. It's, you know, it's, it's tough. Um, it's been tough, certain situations, certain circumstances. But I think the biggest thing our guys have always done is, you know, when it's one game at a time and stay with the approach. And, and I think that's a big part of where we are now. Um, everything is in front of us. You know, we, we play the Saints twice. We get another shot at, uh, at Atlanta. We've got a couple other teams coming up that um, you know, we've got to be able to go out and play well against. On a similar note to Kyle, is there anything when you were watching the tape that you saw from Greg Little's first game back, good, bad? Well, I think Greg's biggest thing, obviously, is just to continue to work. I mean, he's a young guy. And when you play young players, you're going to have growing pains. I mean, that's what we have him with Kyle. Kyle's played very well for us. Um, he's had some tough games, and part of it is, is, is some of the things that he's learning. And part of it is also some of the other players that are around him as well, the young guys. They're going to make mistakes, you know. A couple of weeks ago, we had, uh, you know, we had Dennis Daly out there doing the best he can and getting better with every snap. And same thing with, with Greg. Greg's going to get better with every snap. It, it's, it's one of those things. It's about reps and repetition and practice and play. And, uh, again, just young guys. Ron, the, those, those guys are, are certainly the young guys. Daryl, with the veteran, I know he's coming off injury. Mm -hmm. what, what is it about him this year that just hadn't been able to play? I think really just with him, it's just been opportunities more so than anything else. You know, we've, we've had him a little bit out of position. He's played left tackle. He's played right guard, left guard. He's played some right tackle. And again, I just think with, with Daryl, it's just getting more and more pl uh, playing time. You come off the, the injury he did with the surgery he had, um, and it's just one of those things that uh, the more he plays, the better off he'll be. Ron, you've said before that Kyle's a little unflappable and doesn't let things get to him. That's a tough one yesterday. Yep. What have you seen from him after the game and today? He's been really good. You know, he and I had a conversation after the game yesterday, and I know he talked with Norv. He's probably talked with Norv again today. And, you know, the thing is, he's going to learn from this. You know, I, I think the thing everybody, again, you know, like I, I said last night uh, afterwards, it's a young guy. You know, he's, 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 he's played a lot of football already, um, probably what amounts to his first season. So, again, as he continues to grow and progress, um, you know, I expect him to learn from this, take, take something from this, and uh, – you know, and I expect him to come out and play well next week. Can you characterize that conversation a little bit more? Uh, what was your message to him? Uh, what was the nature of the conversation? Learn. Learn from the experience you just had and uh, take the good with the bad. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's one of these things that, you know, we have a young guy who's going to grow and develop. And the only way that happens is by, by, by playing. And, and we have to accept that. We're going to take the good with the bad. But, uh, you know, he's done a great job for us. And, uh I just think with him and with who he is, he'll bounce back. I think he's a very resilient young man. He seems like a guy that's really honest with himself and tough on himself. But yep. at the same time, how do you do that and then not, all right, let's stop, stop harping on it and let's move on? You know? um, I don't think I, I need to do that. I, I really don't. I, I, I know afterwards when he and I talked, I know he was taking it very hard. He was taking it very personal because, he, you know, like a lot of, lot of us, he feels like he let a lot of people down. And we try to get him to understand it's, it's not just you you know, that's got to make plays. It's, it's the whole team. I mean, if you look at it, all three phases contributed to yesterday. You know, we, we, we had opportunities to make plays. You know, we were put in certain situations that we didn't take advantage of. Um, and, again, we have to be good as a football team to be successful. Where did you see some inconsistencies in the secondary yesterday? Well, uh, I, I think, again, there are certain routes that uh, we've got to cover better. There are some things that we have to communicate better. Um, you know, I thought some guys played very, very well. I, 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 you know, one of the guys that I really um, highlighted today in our, in our meeting was really the way Trey Boston played. I thought Trey came out and played a very, very good game. He was very physical. 
handle a lot of things that they're, that were thrown at them. Um, I just think that you know there are some things that we can do better. Right, to the point about a young quarterback needing game reps, how difficult is it will be this year for Will to get that development when he's not getting those game reps? It'll be very difficult. I think the biggest thing he's going to have to rely on is what's going on with with practice. The thing that I appreciate is is, is watching Scotty and, uh, and and Norv interject, you know, their corrections to, to Will during practice. I mean, that's that's really what's happening for him right now. You know, they. They they, uh, they watch him, they correct him, they, they're trying to coach him up, and it is hard. But, uh, you know, right now we also have another young quarterback that, you know, we still have to develop in terms of making sure Kyle gets as much as he can. To that point, is he getting more reps as the two, though, than he would the three, or is it just all about Kyle because he's young? It's really all about Kyle right now, you know, and, and, and it's one of those things that, you know, we appreciate the, the work that Will does uh, on the field and in the classroom because that's really where you learn. Um, the thing that's interesting about it is, is, is that's you know was one of the things about having a guy like Derek Anderson around for as long as we had. Here was a veteran guy that really didn't need any reps, um, you know, because he had been doing it for so long, um, and he'd been in a system like this for for such a long time. So, you know, it, it's tough. It's it's a fine balance in terms of developing young quarterbacks when you got two of them, um, but you've got to make sure your 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 starters getting the bulk of the work. Brian, uh, limited snaps again for Brian Burns yesterday. How did he play? He had his moments. He really did. You know, there were a couple of them that uh, we, we thought were really good brushes. Um, a couple of them he stalled on, and, and I think part of it is just still he's not quite there being able to really counter with that right arm. That's why it was limited. Um, but he did have a couple of flashes that, that remind you why he's, he could potentially be a really, really good player. Um, you know, they went for the two-point conversion. He came off the edge, made a nice move inside to, to get to the quarterback. So, you know, those are the things that you look for is, in, in the young players is, is that type of growth, uh, especially when you're getting limited action. Uh, about Burns, um, is some of the reason for a little bit more limited snaps that you guys do want to protect that wrist after he had that procedure? He mentioned that there was There's, some internal stuff there that had to get fixed. And yes, I mean, and then again, um, you know, it's one of the things that you do think about uh, because, again, at certain situations, certain circumstances, it's uh, it's hard to play that position. I mean, you got to use both your hands. You got to be able to, you know, grab and pull and turn and torque, and. Um, that's hard when you can't really get a good grip. And we saw some of it, you know, in terms of uh, him struggling with it and him having success with it. We always talk about, you know, once defenses get film on quarterback, but what about when defensive linemen get fi- or offensive linemen get film on guys like Brian? It looks like they're kind of stepping back a little bit and letting him. You know, That's kind of happened a little bit um, to him and to, um, and to Marquise. You know, a couple of young guys that have had success early in, in the year when a lot of people didn't know a lot of things about them. And that's also where young guys have got to develop that feel for when it's time to counter. And, again, the hard part for, for, for Burns is, you know, if you're going to go to counter and you're favoring one side already, you're, you'll have even more trouble. And, and that's come with some of the things that he's run into is that sometimes he hasn't been able to win off the initial and then he's got to try and counter with that bad hand. Talked about this a little bit yesterday with the penalties that happened. Was there anything when you looked back that stood out to you that you're going to point out, or anything in particular from that? Um, they're unfortunate. Um, it's uh, it's one of those things again when you get a chance to look at it on tape and you see some of the things that were penalties, and you, you do wonder how those things got called or why they were called. And so you know uh, that's one of them. But the second thing is you know for the most part we've been one of the least penalized teams in the league. So. That's another tough pill to swallow um, to, to see that happen. So, again, it's just got to go back and make sure we're, 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 we're being disciplined and we're not putting on ourselves in that position or we're creating the illusion that that's what happened. Ron, I'm sure you took positives from the run defense. What did you take? What did you think could be taken forward as the season goes on with that? Well, probably the biggest thing is that, you know, looking at the way we fit the gaps, it, you know, that's how we should have been playing all along. And that's probably the toughest pill to swallow is just because, you know, when, when we do the things we're supposed to, we stay in our creases like we should, uh, we fight the pressure, um, we play the gap and a half technique, uh, we fall back where we need to, we can be pretty good, you know. Um, they had one run, I think uh, the longest one was 11 yards, and, and that one should have been taken care of too. But, you know, we had a guy go to fit his gap, and, and he hesitated, and he allowed the, the, the blocker to get to him and, and cut him off. And... Um, and we had to have the uh, the corner insert and, and make the tackle for 11 yard gain. I mean, again, we just have to understand that get into your creases, play your techniques. You know, you're supposed to what we call chase the hip, chase the hip. So, again, just looking at those things and, and just feeling really good that at least we took a step in the right direction when it comes to, to to the run defense and showing that up. Greg said yesterday that, that, that 
after, after the game that there were some players, you know, that needed to just kind of stop acting cool. Was there anything when you looked at the tape that maybe that he could have been, you know, relating there with effort-wise or anything like that? Well, again, I think when you when you get a chance to look at the tape and you see what happens and you see the things that go on, you know, the, the biggest thing is, 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 you know, everybody's got to make sure they're doing their job, taking care of their business, doing the things that they're supposed to the way they're supposed to. Ron, the, the run, the, the pass to run balance was pretty heavy and understanding in the second half you had to. But even in the first half, why was that such a big part of the game plan to throw more than, than run? Well, I think, again, one of the things you wanted to do was try to get them out of the eight-man box. You know, if you have success throwing the ball, eventually what happens is the team stops getting in an eight-man box, and now you can run the ball a little bit more fluidly. And that was probably the thing that when you look at it, um, we could have done. I mean, um, you know, looking at the stats, we were almost rushed for 100 yards, right? I, I think it was almost 100. And, um, and so if you could get them out of the eight-man box, you could run the ball more successfully. So that was one of the things that we were hoping to do. Um, you know, we had a couple opportunities uh, with, uh, with the two-minute drill. I think we threw the ball all but one time during the two-minute drill. So, again, it's, uh, that may have skewed it a little bit, too. Will you, consider any changes? Will you consider any changes in the starting lineup, or do you think that's not necessary at this point? Uh, Either side of the ball. I'm just curious. No, I don't think it's necessary. Does it make it, go ahead. Does it make it more frustrating that Christian has a big day, but yet the offense kind of stalls and sputters and, and isn't able to put up points, even though Christian? Well, the, the disappointment, obviously, is, is, is we got into the red zone and didn't score touchdowns. You know, and that's one of the things you guys have always heard me talk about. Second is we didn't protect the football as, as, as well as we, we, we need to. And third is we, we got to take the football away. You know, when you have, uh, when, you, when you do your job, put yourself in position and make a play, you've got to make it. And one of the things we talk about is being playmakers. So if you're, you know, where you're supposed to be, you run the route the way you need to, you drop in the coverage the way you, you, you can, you know, you've got to make the play. Uh, we got the ball out one time and unfortunately it bounced right back into the guy's stomach. So. Um, you know, that's, that, that's part of the game, though. Sometimes the bounces go your way, sometimes they don't. Right. A lot of teams in the NFC continue to win. Is that what you were sort of referring to when you talked about controlling it? Because some of those teams are still on your schedule. Absolutely. I mean, again, that's, that, that's what happens. You know, uh, we've been through this before where we've had to win football games um, when we've focused in one at a time, and we'll see what happens. Was that your message this morning? That's part of my message this morning. Ron, you've been through obviously the ups and the downs, but with the team three of the last four not going your way, how much of, uh, I guess, the, what, you talk about the message, how much of the message delivered as, okay, let's do this, or you got to have to maybe, I, I hate the word coddle, but you try to pick guys up emotionally to get them back. Well, that's part of it. I mean, you know, you've got to understand the psyche of your team, understand the psyche of each individual. And some guys you, 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 you do have to coddle, other guys you've got to kick in the seat of their pants. And, and hopefully it, it gets them going, and we'll see what happens. Right, we're talking about defensively, just trying to you know, make the plays when they're there. Look like Shaq had a great break on the ball. Um, could potentially have been a, kind of a pick six situation. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as just one of, one of those kind of opportunities? That yeah, just, it most certainly was. Had. I mean, you know, again, you, you, when, when you have an opportunity to make a play, a big play, you hope we can do it. And, and it really does help and impact the game. And, you know, it's, it's just like the same thing with on special teams. You know, we, we, we outkick our coverage. Um, you know, we had a couple of guys in position to, to impact that play, and unfortunately it didn't happen. Um, you know, we had a guy have an opportunity to make a big play on the offensive side and didn't do it. So, again, it's, it's just the little saying that the play doesn't care who makes it, but the plays are there to be made. We've got to make them. Thanks, guys. All right.